So these two characteristics, the landmarks must be the same and the end must be the same. And this is what the text is saying. Consider, follow their faith, considering the end of their conversation, where they ended up in their life. Consider them. And so we need to understand the landmarks of the way to heaven. And John chapter 12, verse 32 and 33, gives us an appreciation of what the landmarks are. The Gospel of John, in the 12th chapter, The Gospel of John, in the 12th chapter, and reading in verse 32 and 33. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. This he said, signifying what death he should die. So here is a landmark that's to be put up. And note the Bible says all men will be drawn to this landmark. And the landmark was that which signified his death. It was the cross of Jesus Christ. And this cross of Jesus Christ stands at the head of the way. It is the beginning, the first landmark you see on the way to heaven. And we can read here in Bible Commentary, SDA Bible Commentary, Volume 5, page 1095-1096. It says, The cross stands where two roads diverge. One is the path of obedience leading to heaven. The other leads into the broad road where man can easily go with his burden of sin and corruption, but it leads to perdition. So this cross, the cross of Jesus Christ, stands where two roads diverge. Note this, it is the landmark for both roads. And so... As we desire, as Christians, or as any human in fact, everyone desires life, and you can prove it, you strangle someone and I want you to stop strangling them because they want to live. Otherwise they just let you go. You try it. Everyone wants to live. Everyone has this desire. What man is he that desireth life? That seeketh many days that he may see good. Whether you're Buddhist, whether you're Hindu, whether you're Jewish, Christian, you just want to live. And this life, everyone wants to live and everybody is not satisfied with where they are. Everyone has a prickle under their seat because they want to move. You, no man can stay still in this planet. People are desiring wealth or desiring something. If you don't have something to go for, without a vision, the people perish. The whole world is moving is travelling along this highway, this freeway. And along this freeway, there is the cross of Christ, and it is where the roads diverge. I will draw all men unto me. In other words, he is the major billboard sign of the planet. Everyone will pass it. And as they see the cross of Christ... It creates different reactions. And some may see the cross of Christ and think, that's, that's a historical landmark. It happened 2,000 years ago in Jerusalem. How interesting. And some may scorn it and say, that's, that's just Roman execution. Heathenism. Some may be touched by it and think, wow. I heard that this man died for my sins. And they may be amazed. And those who are Christians are those who respond to that landmark in a positive way. 
they see that cross and they, they look at that man dying there and think, wow, I haven't seen that before. And they are told, he died for your sins. And they say, wow, that's good. And they keep traveling. I'm a Christian. But they haven't entered the little path. They pass the cross of Christ, but they don't go through it. Because here, where the two roads diverge, it's a, it's a major highway going past the cross, and the road that goes to heaven goes through the cross. In other words, you have to climb up onto that cross, be crucified yourself, die, be raised again, and then you keep going. That's how you get to heaven. But people don't see that that cross is a place to go. They see it as a place of amazement. Wow, he did something for me, so I'm told. And they pass on. But we are told that peace, we are told that peace comes through the blood of his cross. And that's according to Colossians chapter 1 and verse 20. This cross. And so Jesus Christ is on the cross and he is saying something in Lamentations chapter 1 and verse 12. Lamentations chapter 1 and verse 12. And it reads, Is it nothing to you, all ye that pass by? Behold and see if there be any sorrow like unto my sorrow which is done unto me, wherewith the Lord hath afflicted me in the day of his fierce anger. From above hath he sent fire into my bones, and it prevailed against them. He hath spread a net for my feet. He hath turned me back. He hath made me desolate and faint all the day. The yoke of my transgression is bound by his hand. They are wreathed and come upon my neck. He hath made my strength to fall. The Lord hath delivered me into their hands, from whom I am not able to rise up. Here Jesus Christ is on the cross, and this major highway is going past, and he says, Is it nothing to you, all ye that pass by? Behold and see if there be any sorrow like unto my sorrow. And some may say, yeah, but how can, how can this Jewish carpenter in Jerusalem in 33 AD know what I'm going through in Australia in 2010? He never had a problem with his phone. He never broke down in his car. He never got sacked from his big high job. He doesn't understand what I'm going through. It's so...